Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And as you can tell, I'm still sick. I'm so sorry. So I figured, you know what? I'm not going to show my face on this one because I look pretty bad. Uh, my right eye is kind of uh, filled up with blood a little bit. Uh, nothing too major. It's clearing out now because I've been putting drops in it and stuff. Uh, but I think uh, maybe a blood vessel or something popped in my eye the other day. And I've been sick. I got a flu on top of everything. So it's just been, <laughs> it's been a rough weekend. I had two days off and I was like, wow, I don't normally like having two days off in a row uh, because um, one of the days I always get lazy and I'm like, I'll do everything tomorrow. And, uh, and then of course, you know, I find a way to like do some work on the first day off. But if I have one day off at a time, I don't know. I just find a better way to balance things. I'll be like, all right, I'll get stuff done in the morning and then I'll rest in the afternoon. Uh, but when I have two days off in a row, I usually just waste that first day. Well, I didn't, I couldn't uh, this week because I'm not feeling well. So I was like, all right, let's just get stuff done. Let's make some content. Let's get some videos up. Um, I got some Ghost Rider videos coming up for you guys, and I'll have some other stuff coming very, very soon. And hopefully by the time this posts, you'll see my two videos I made before I got really sick. Uh, Saturday night, I recorded some videos for you guys. So hopefully those are up by now too. Uh, those are my Amazing Spider-Man 30 review and my Miles Morales 2 review. So uh, definitely give a like on the video if you if you enjoy this kind of content. And uh, let me know your thoughts down below with this news here, which is from Collider. I'll put a link to this article down below. Uh, written by Jeff Snyder. Venom 2 has Logan producer Hutch Parker joining the Tom Hardy sequel. Um, so yes, so Tom Rothman, who used to work at Fox and who, in my opinion, was kind of a, 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 a wrench in the spokes of creativity when it came to people trying to do stuff with the X-Men. Not saying everyone ha who was working on X-Men had great ideas. You know, that's the thing about ideas is they're not all great. They're not all going to stick. Uh, but Rothman would consistently come in and, uh, and, you know, put his two cents in or, or be very passionate about not doing something a certain way. I think mainly the Deadpool version we got in Wolverine Origins was kind of due to Tom Rothman, or at least that's what reports have said. I don't know if that's true. Obviously, I wasn't in the room when any of that happened, so you never really know with this stuff, but... Um, when it comes to Tom Rothman, his track record with stuff and, and him getting involved is not always great. And I heard even how he got really involved in Venom in the editing room and came in and chopped a lot of stuff up as well. And I don't know if I fully agree with that because there were some things Tom Hardy even said he wished made in the final product, but he wasn't wasn't able to get in there. And I'm guessing that's some of the stuff that got chopped by Tom Rothman. So this is all speculation. I don't really know. Uh, but whenever I see his name, I don't get overly excited <laughs> for, for what is about to come. And so in this one, he, he I guess he uh, worked with Hutch Parker before. Hutch was uh, working, you know, producer on the X-Men movies. And so Tom Roth was like, oh, I have a relationship with this guy. He's got, you know, he's a longtime friend in a way. And uh, I just hope that's a, a good thing for us and and not a good thing for any ideas Tom Rothman has. I'm starting to wonder because Tom Rothman had to go in. I get from what I heard from reports. Again, I don't know if it's true, but from what I heard from reports, um, he apparently went in and helped edit the Venom movie or like had a say in the editing of the Venom movie and led it to being you know chopped down to the to the to the version we got. And although I the version we got is fine, but there were a lot of problems I had with the movie, and I wonder if some of that cut footage would have helped, you know, deal with some of that or helped expand on some of the things that I felt like should have been expanded on. So you don't really know what happened there, uh, but uh, I'm hoping that Hutch Parker isn't a yes man to Tom Rothman, I guess is what I'm hoping here. Um, I'm sure the guy will come in and be professional and do his thing. Um, he's already joining Avi Arad, Matt Tomac, and Amy Pascal. Um, and even when I see their names on stuff, I don't get overly excited. Uh, you know, they're all great at what they do for the most part. Uh, I guess they, you know, bring movies in under budget or, you know, what are on time or whatever they got to do. So I guess that's, you know, they, they do their jobs for the most part. Uh, but still, like, creatively, I feel like, uh, you know, th th there's, a, there's not a lot of really creative juices there, uh, in my opinion. It, it feels like just four strict business people, which is fine, I guess. Um, but as a, you know, from a producer standpoint, you want at least one or two creative people that come in. That's why Kevin Feige is so successful at what he does is because he's a creative type and a business type. Um, so, and I don't, I don't know, Matt Tomac is probably the closest out of all these people that they have to a creative person and a business person. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm going off on a rant there and picking on these people, which I'm not really meaning to do. It's just, when I see all this, I'm like, all right, cool. A new producer's coming on, but there's already three and Tom Hardy to an extent is involved, uh, in, in a, some way. I don't know if as a direct producer or what, but he, I know he's involved behind the camera too, in some ways. And, um, you know, on the other side, like part of the crew, I guess, uh, I, I heard, 
I, or at least I heard that from the first movie. But uh, but having Hutch Parker in is like, oh, right, now we have another producer. And that's the thing about a lot of times with producers, especially ones that have visions or ha- or want to do things like uh, it, they, they collide a lot, you know, and, and the more it's like having multiple writers on one script, it doesn't always lead to a good thing. I mean, you do have producers and executive producers and, you know, you have different types of producers, but as far as I know, all of these people are at the same level, the same level of producer. And, uh, and the fact that this guy has worked with Tom Rothman before and they have a relationship and he says longtime friend um, or it says in the article longtime friend i'm wondering if he's just going to be a yes man to tom rothman and if that's the case that doesn't get me too excited uh for anything but then again it's like well maybe maybe they need it because on the other hand we have avi matt and amy and i'm like 50 50 on them too so it's it's a little tough man um at least from, you know, looking at this from a fan standpoint. Uh, but this uh, article, it goes on, it says, uh, you know, an industry source tells Collider that Parker is a total pro who came aboard Venom 2 a couple months ago due to his experience with Marvel movies as well as his relationship with Rothman from their time together at Fox. And as far as what he's produced, let's see here. It says uh, that Hutch has produced James Mangold's critically acclaimed Logan, which that's great. That's major points for him there. He also did the predecessor to that, which is the Wolverine. Uh, so he was a producer on that, which I like that movie. I think the third act kind of falls apart, but I do ultimately like that movie a lot. Uh, Days of Future Past, which I also think is probably one of the best X-Men movies that they've made out of all of them next to X2. Um, but then, so those are like three wins for him, I guess, uh, according to me at least. Uh, but then he also did Josh Trank's Fantastic Four, which I still have not seen. So I can't really pass judgment. I know a lot of people hate it, but I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Uh, I'm just too big of a Fantastic Four fan to watch it. I just couldn't, I couldn't separate my fandom from it at all. I just was like, ah, it doesn't look like something I would enjoy. But I don't know, haven't seen it. So, um, but he also produced X Men Apocalypse, which is like 50 50 to me. Like, I, half that movie's pretty decent, and the other half is total schlock, but like bad schlock, like that I don't like. Um, and then Dark Phoenix, which I was not a big fan of. I did like it more than the previous version, like the previous cut, but I didn't like it as much. I mean, I didn't like it compared to the other X-Men movies that much. Uh, And then also New Mutants, which doesn't come out yet. So he's got a mixed track record when it comes to comic book movies, but he also did Peter Berg's Patriot's Days, which they list here. Uh, According to this uh, article, it's this person's one of his top 10 movies of that year, along with Logan. So that's great, I guess. So Again, just having a producer on doesn't mean the movie's going to be great or bad. Uh, it it truly doesn't. I mean, they're going to come in. It's a collaborative effort. They're going to come in and they're going to they're going to have final say on certain things, and that's all going to be worked out by them for the most part. Um, so they might have final say, or at least uh, not maybe not even final say, but just you know have a strong influence on what the final say is. Uh, but it, that's going to differ from person to person. So we don't know what exactly Hutch you know has here, what he's going to be in charge of, what he's going to you know be talking about or like you know kind of be overseeing um but having another producer on this movie it just shows too that that uh you know sony really wants this to be a hit and this article is a little outdated this is from like a week ago so the sony mcu deal hadn't been remade yet so they're saying like oh you know they're going to need the help because this doesn't have the mcu bump like the last one did even though the last venom movie didn't really have an mcu bump either i guess people i guess that's the 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 misconception that sony wants people to have like mass audiences they want you to think that you're seeing something set in the mcu or like relative related to the mcu i guess that's but i mean i clearly know that's not true and i know a lot of you know that's not true but i guess that for the masses they're trying to make that perception and now with this new spider-man deal they might be able to continue that perception by saying hey look spider-man can meet venom now and in the mcu so i saw these articles going up of people going venom's gonna be in the mcu and it's like well nobody said that (laughs) actually uh, uh kevin feige said that Sony's developing their own Spider-Verse and you never know what's going to happen next. I think implying that, okay, Spider-Man, and he, but he says the line before that is Spider-Man can jump cinematic universes. So that means Spider-Man can hang out in the MCU and if he wants, he can open a portal and go into the world where Venom is. Almost like the way Supergirl is done on the CW. That's how I compared it to. And that's how it read to me. So all these people coming out with these articles, it's just like more clickbait, more false information. Just, you know, nobody said that. Nobody said Venom is in the MCU. Uh, Venom is in the Venomverse. And, uh, and now Spidey can visit the Venomverse too. So anyway, we got this, you know, they, and they give more information about, you know, Andy Serkis and, you know, the movies he's directed before, Breathe and Mowgli and, uh, and all the other stuff. And that the, the, 
tentative release date for this sequel for Venom 2 is October 2nd, 2020, which I like as far as numbering goes, because it's like, it's the second movie, it's on October 2nd, and it's uh, 2020, like, you know, 2020. So uh, I like that. I hope they stick to that. But again, that's going to come down to how production goes and how well everything is, you know, is and how smooth it is. And I imagine that, you know, Tom Hardy is going to want to keep things smooth. That's why he, you know, wanted Kelly Marcel to start working on the script months ago when she did, so they can hash out things. So that way, when they get to the set, he knows exactly the journey that Eddie Brock is going to go on in this one. He knows his motivation. He knows everything. He doesn't have to completely figure everything out on set. He's going to already have a hand in some of the story working with Kelly Marcel. And hopefully the other actors, you know, uh, have stronger developed characters as well. And Andy Serkis, I hope he really brings out some great performances from everyone else because Tom Hardy stood out to me big time in the first movie, but Michelle Williams and some of these other people that were in it are still great actors. And I want to see them shine as much as Tom Hardy shined in the first one. So uh, we'll see where this goes, but let's let me know what your thoughts are of Hutch here joining uh, the you know the team. I guess I guess it's always good to have more people on the team, but in some regards, it does worry me just a little bit of how many producers there are on this film. I think there was a lot on the first one, but that's again just solidifies my point even more, which is you know too many chefs in the kitchen could cause problems. And it's, you know, and I hope all these people, they say in the article, everyone here likes each other and they're going to work well together. But of course they got to say that, you know, to an extent, but things get heated on set and sometimes ideas clash. I just hope whatever ideas clash, it's for the betterment of the movie. And we get Venom 2 being a stronger film than the first one. And that's all I care about at the end of the day. My personal feelings about some of these people aside, because some of my personal feelings might even be based on false information. And that happens sometimes. So, you know, I'm trying to trying to be a little bit more partial here and not pick on them so much. Uh, because they still brought us the first Venom movie. And that brought all of us together. And that, you know, brought this show to life in a lot of ways. So in many ways, I do owe these people <laughs> for big time. And I'm glad they're keeping the Venom franchise going. And I can't wait to see what they do with the second one. One, and I can't wait to see what you know to see what Hutch brings to the table. So let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below of Hutch Parker joining the team. Are you excited? Are you not? You know, do you have your own thoughts on it? Do you think I'm a little too harsh on people? Let me know all that in the comments below. And we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.